the Cybersecurity and Compliance Podcast with Craig Petronella. Learn about the most current IT security threats in ransomware, phishing, business email compromise, cyber crime tactics, cyber heist schemes, social engineering scams, as well as hints and tips from leading professionals to help you prevent hackers from penetrating your network and dropping ransomware or malware payloads. This podcast will arm you with the best info to defend your network against the latest cyber crimes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now, here's your host, Craig Petronella. Seems like everything is Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah, one thing I read that might be interesting is that there's a hacking group that was started that's recruited 300,000 hackers to support Ukraine. I saw Russia revoked all the anti-piracy laws. Did you hear about that? So now people can pirate movies and music and all that legally. That's crazy. Yeah, so this was on The Guardian. 300,000 volunteer hackers come together to fight Russia. Yeah, so apparently there's this big recruitment on the Telegram chat app, and it's called the IT Army of Ukraine. It says, through which participants are assigned tasks designed to take the fight to Putin and try to level the playing field between one or of the world's superpowers in Ukraine as it faces bombardment and invasion. This was an interesting one. So yesterday, Apple released 39 fixes for security defects in iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, because they found security vulnerabilities in all of their operating systems. Mac OS, Catalina, Big Sur, Monterey, TV OS, Watch OS, iTunes, and Xcode. 39 documented vulnerabilities that could lead to a remote code execution attacks if an iPhone user opens a malicious PDF file or views malicious web content. Jeez, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely update your iPhone and your Mac. Here's a good one. Nearly 34 ransomware variants observed in hundreds of cyber attacks in quarter four of 21. Oh, happy Tuesday. I guess it is patch Tuesday, isn't it? (laughs) So we'll launch off with Patch Tuesday and the huge 39 documented iOS and iPad vulnerabilities that are patched in iOS 15.4, iPad OS 15.4, as well as Mac OS. So basically update, update, reboot, and update again. It's a big one. I think the 300,000 volunteer hackers is interesting too. So there, there's a 300,000 volunteers that have basically signed up on the Telegram channel to support Ukraine and fight Russia in The Guardian this morning. So what's the topic today? I think it's more cyber headlines of the day. I don't think that there's a singular topic. DJ, did you figure anything out today? Just that thing I sent about the government's revisiting the whole topic of cloud security and people doing their part. The wording was government anxiety returns about the cloud. I think the big thing was the 300,000 volunteer hackers supporting Ukraine. I think that's- That I didn't even see. So that is a really big deal. That ties into what you were talking about yesterday, Craig, about the people doing something. And that's actually a nonviolent way. So yeah. If it attacked Russia's scatter, what happened with Stuxnet, it could be pretty devastating. I guess I don't know what the orchestration of that is, but it's certainly uh, for the good, ultimately. So tell us what happened again. 300,000 hackers have banded together to help support Ukraine, defend and fight against Russia. Well, that's cool. And how are they doing that exactly? They set up a telegram channel for the recruitment. And Mm -hmm. this was published in The Guardian. Do you know the origins of it? They're kind of anonymizing some of it for obvious reasons, but I could tell you that it's called the IT Army of Ukraine. Oh, wow. Really? (laughs) That's quite a name. They said that they've already been successful in disrupting Russian web services, according to NetBlocks. Wow. Says the availability of websites of the Kremlin and Duma, Russia's lower house of parliament, have been intermittent since the invasion started. They owned media services, several banks, and the energy giant Gazprom have also been targeted. So it's basically crowdsourcing cyber attacks. Wow. Organized anonymous cyber attacks. (laughs) Yeah, there's a guy on Twitter in this article. I don't know how to say his name. Mikhailo, M-Y-K-H-A-I-L-O. Is that how you say it? Mikhailo Fedorov, F-E-D-O-R-O-V. And what's his role? He's just the one that tweeted this. His tweet says, we are creating an IT army. We need digital talents. Oh, wow. All operational tasks will be given here. And he links to the Telegram link of IT Army of Ukraine. There will be tasks for everyone. We continue to fight on the cyber front. The first task is on channel for cyber specialists. 
just for argument's sake, if they deployed an XDR, this IT army of Ukraine, just for an example, if they deployed an XDR tool amongst their SCADA systems and stuff like that, couldn't they have it programmed to block Russian traffic just to be on the safe side? Isn't that possible? Some SCADA systems are have to be air-gapped or disconnected. Their networking sometimes isn't the same as a typical PC. So it really depends on what protocols it supports and how modern the SCADA system is it would depend on what capabilities it could have. But oftentimes, SCADA systems use dated or outdated Microsoft Windows operating systems, for example, where, yes, an XDR type tool would definitely be able to help an unpatched monitor a block and stop an unpatched endpoint. Wow. Yeah. So that was a big, big post this morning. That's a pretty big deal. That's a lot of people to crowdsource that quick. I mean, I guess maybe it's not that quickly. They're just announcing it now. Maybe it's been in the works since the beginning of the invasion, but still that's quite a number to organize. Yeah. It's probably bigger now. Now that it's got publicity, right? Right. Yeah. This was just published. This was six in the morning Eastern. Wow. We've come across people just in our line of work that you remember, I won't name them, but some of the people that do pen testing and stuff that are like white hat hackers and stuff didn't really have a cause, but with a cause, there's quite a few of them out there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Some of them are very highly skilled. We ran into a few ourselves at Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff that were obviously very highly skilled. That's interesting. Yeah, for sure. I saw a headline last night. I don't know if you guys saw this yet. I'm not really too familiar with Microsoft, Craig. I'm sure you are. Yeah, it's just basically their cloud offering similar to Amazon AWS. Oh, okay. So that's interesting then. I didn't know that's what it was. I never really looked into Azure, but because Amazon has its quantum center now, they have Amazon Bracket for quantum computing. And then now they have Azure Quantum. They're letting people on board to Azure Quantum now. I saw that last night. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I would think that all the big players like that would be wanting to support those kind of efforts. That's interesting. Well, that's a major development then, 300,000 people. I would venture to say that whatever parties are involved in this crisis weren't accounting for something like that to develop. Yep. I think the other thing that Blake found too with 30 plus patches for pretty much all Apple devices. And today is ironically Patch Tuesday. So I'm sure Microsoft has their treasure trove of patches announced for the day. They usually come out every Tuesday of the week. And then if there's a rush patch or a patch that needs to be put on midweek because of a a high vulnerability, then that'll be announced as well. But definitely want to make sure that you're updating all of your endpoints and devices, especially at this time with all the stuff going on. Were there pretty major Apple patches announced? Yeah, there's a new iOS for iPhone, iPad iOS, as well as Mac OS. And Apple Watch, yeah, every operating system, iOS. So there's corruption flaws in Mac and iPads and iPhones. What does that mean? What's a corruption flaw? I guess whenever a software writes to the memory, it creates some type of corrupted data or something. It says iPad iOS updates fixes memory corruption flaws in multiple OS software components, including AVE, video encoder, core media, FaceTime, GPU drivers, iTunes, kernel sandbox, Siri, and software updates. 39 documented iPad and iOS vulnerabilities, which also included patches to Catalina, Big Sur, Monterey, TVOS, WatchOS, iTunes, and Xcode, which is the software that you use to write Apple apps. The flaws could expose users to remote code execution attacks, whatever that is. Yeah. That was the log for j wasn't it, Craig? That was the risk with that was that it exposed them to remote code execution. Yeah, similar where you open a link or you open a PDF file or something, and then there could be cross-site scripting or XSS or remote code execution where a bad actor could remotely drop a bad payload of some sort, some type of malware, keylogger, etc. This was just 40 minutes ago where banks are on alert for the Russian reprisal. It says big banks fear that SWIFT faces a growing threat of Russian cyber attacks after seven of the country's lenders were kicked off the global payments messaging system over the weekend. Seven of the Russian banks that were planned to be kicked off, or were we talking about seven attacks that caused banks to be kicked off? So seven of the country's lenders were kicked off the SWIFT global payment messaging system over the weekend. Which country, Russia or the United States? Big banks fear that SWIFT faces a growing threat of Russian cyber attacks after seven of the country's lenders were kicked off the global payment messaging system over the weekend. So it's VTB, Russia's second biggest bank, 
which finances Russia's war machine, were among the lenders removed on Saturday from SWIFT as part of the West sanctions campaign against Moscow in response to its invasion of Ukraine. So SWIFT is like a standard to wire money for international payments and things like that. And it looks like there are sanctions imposed to kick off and sanction and punish Russia. So they're saying that because that happened, because seven of the country's lenders were kicked off the SWIFT system, they can't make payments and exchanges now. They're fearing that Russia will retaliate with cyber attacks. And you said that one of those lenders that was kicked off, the wording that they used was that it funds the war machine? Well, the SWIFT system does not fund the war machine, but Russia... Not directly anywhere. People that are in support, (laughs) how do they get money to Russia? That was a way they would use the SWIFT system to wire money to Russia. and It just cut off that tie. Here's another headline. It says, Russian cyber attacks have been well tested on U.S. This was posted four hours ago. Russian-based cyber attacks against U.S. targets have been well tested. As the war with Ukraine continues, cyber professionals have warned about possibility of Russian cyber capabilities being used on the U.S. Russia already has a proven ability to infiltrate U.S. systems, says they've demonstrated, be it the solar winds or colonial pipeline issue and energy across the board. They have evidence of the capability. Everybody should be pretty much on high alert. And make sure that the updates you're doing are verified official, because here's one headline about a fake antivirus update launching cobalt strike malware in Ukraine. Yeah. Never click on a link. Always go direct to the manufacturer. That's very good advice. (laughs) Don't click the link. Yeah, type it yourself. I don't know if you guys have seen, but I've noticed a a large increase in phishing email uh, across the board of all different kinds of companies. Obviously verify the sender. Don't click on links. Interestingly, in addition to all that, as if there's not enough going on in the world right now, right? I guess if we're going to have a climax, it's going to be all inclusive, right? From another perspective... You know how there's a lot of the internet cables, right? Now we have the global satellite internet up in space, but then we also have the internet cables on the opposite end of the spectrum in the deepest part of the oceans. There's news now, just recently, holes the size of city blocks are forming in the Arctic seafloor. An ice shelf that was blocking the flow from Antarctica in three days has basically split apart. Sea ice that slowed the flow of Antarctic glacier abruptly shatters in three days. There's an odd connection to where some of this is man-made, like the crisis and the the war is man-made. But then you have scientific stuff converging at the same time of an epic scale as well. Yeah. You know how they're always talking about asteroids recently and, but this one's going to miss Earth, that one's going to miss Earth. Not to be alarming, but there was a headline about this one that was a near hit. It says asteroid discovered only two hours before Earth impact. To spin it in a positive way, the encouraging side is on the development with the quantum stuff because that opens up a whole new realm of early detection possibilities. Russia just announced that they're putting sanctions on Joe Biden and Jim Psaki and Hillary Clinton and Hunter Biden and all this random people. And if they have any assets in Russia, they're freezing those assets and they're preventing them from traveling to Russia. Scary stuff. Are the elites all turning on each other? (laughs) I doubt any of these people have assets in Russia. Yeah, probably not. But whatever the framework is that they all work from when they do these things, it seems like they're all trying to kind of follow the same protocol. Right. But it kind of seems like they're starting to spin out of control a little bit. It's starting to seem a little bit absurd. Yeah. Well, one thing I just dug up that was interesting. It says Russia, who paid $3.5 million to Biden's brother, Hunter Biden, who was paid $3.5 million by a Russian oligarch. I saw a meme of Eric Trump like, oh, yeah, if my dad was president, my dad understands Putin and was KGB and he realized that my dad's a strong person and all this stuff. And then he goes on to brag that we get all the funding we need from Russia, da, 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 da. You know, even though when Trump was in White House, they were denying that they were getting funds from Russia. And then he goes on to say that. Well... There's growth in other areas, like the people uniting whatever cause they're uniting. And then on the flip side, it seems like there's a bit of chaos ensuing with the upper echelons. (laughs) I think Hunter Biden worked for a firm that... He was in Ukraine. Yeah, but they raised funds, right? Hedge fund or something like that. He was on the board of directors for a Ukrainian company. It's safe to say that there seems to be a lot of connections between all the politicians at the high levels. They all seem to share some connections at the high levels. Yeah. But good thing that it looks like the people are sharing some connections too. So that's good news. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Cybersecurity and Compliance Podcast with Craig Petronella. 
For other episodes and more information, visit PetronellaTech.com. Also visit our other websites, ComplianceArmor.com and BlockchainSecurity.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening and stay secure.